Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're gonna to be talking about, will time make my ex miss me or forget about me? Mm. It's a major worry, huh? It's one of the biggest, Margaret. And you know, we've talked about this before, but I thought it would be really good to bring it back up and talk about it. Cause it's been a long time since we did a video on this. And not only that, you know, we think of different aspects to things that we talked about a while ago sometimes. Yep. Absolutely. So we're going to talk about this one and listen up because we're going to get pretty deep on this one. Yeah. Because we want you to really understand why we're saying the things that we're saying. And so in order to do that, we got to get a little bit in depth, but I think you're really going to appreciate it and it's going to help you feel a lot better. Okay. So first let's talk about connection, right? You think about an, a relationship, you think about a connection, an attachment, and we are wired to connect as human beings, to bond with our caregivers and our community and then our romantic partners when we get older, right? Yep. And this is really important to understand that it's part of, a huge part of a human being's uh, safety or ability to survive. Absolutely. Is... Yeah. When we're born, we're totally helpless. Okay. Yeah. And we really have to depend on the people around us. Um, and if they're reliable, wonderful. But if they aren't, it's not easy. Yeah. So infants are helpless completely. They can't take care of themselves. They can't feed themselves. Nope. They need someone to take care of them. Otherwise they will die. Now, even as you get older, a child and even in your teens, it would be very hard to take care of yourself if you were living in the wild, right? Like, of course. You would, Think about it. Yeah. Yeah. It would be nearly impossible. The caves of France where they have all those neat pictures. Yeah. So it's important to understand that there is this biological hardwiring in this that is all connected to bonding and attachment and it's a survival and there's an alarm system in us that goes off yep. when we detach from somebody. And all of that is still with us back to evolution. Okay. It's a survival strategy from mother nature. So yeah, well, let's talk about that because you know, if you detach or you separate from your loved ones, you're putting yourself at risk for death, oh. right? That's what your unconscious is going to tell you. That's right. Uh, you could be attacked by an animal or another tribe or fall off a cliff or drown or whatever it may be. End up the saber-toothed tiger's lunch. Eat something that's poisonous, yep. whatever it may be. So you in your unconscious is saying, stay close. Think of young children. They don't go away from their parents for too far. They toddle back when they go too far away, right? Exactly. Because... Their, their unconscious is saying, you got to go back, you got to stay close. It's not safe for you. It's dangerous, that's right. And all of this is tied to your connection with your ex. You'll see where we're going with this, okay? Now, Margaret, you would say anxiety, separation anxiety, is a human being's biggest fear. Right. Separation anxiety. I was taught in social work school, and I thought the professor was nuts. And she said, all anxiety is separation anxiety. Mm -hmm. I have come to understand that now, how many years later, a lot. Mm -hmm. um, because the thing that is most upsetting to us is a loss of a loved one, okay? But remember, we have the panic feeling from being little, where we might get eaten or stolen or all of those things. Yep, all right? death, 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 right? That that primal panic. Right. And it feels like death. There isn't going to be anybody to feed me or take care of me. Yeah. Yep. And so... And remember, there's no time in the unconscious. Okay? What does that mean when you say no time? There's no time in the unconscious. And people will say, well, what difference does it make what happened back there when I was one and a half years old? In the unconscious, there's no sense of time. Feelings are just feelings and they just sort of exist in a hazy realm somewhere. Yeah. Okay? So we don't really know with, with emotions and feelings whether it's now or old. And familiar things now bring back the old ones. That's right. Yeah. So I mentioned primal panic, right? So primal panic is like this fear that we have that is overwhelming us 
It's like an alarm system that won't go off that I'm sure sends all kinds of chemicals through our body and released, released in our brain. And it says we have to go and find our loved ones. That's right. We're not safe. I'm at risk of being de killed I, or dead. I'm going to find them or die. Yeah. Exactly. That's kind of how it feels. And so that's what you're going through in your breakup. That's why it's so hard to uh, deal with it and, you know, calm and yourself. And from a logical point of view, many people say to us, and with good reason, we understand, well, how is anything that happened that, that long ago going to influence me now? I don't know that we know why, but we certainly know that it does. Yes. Yep. We've been talking. We, I used to argue with Margu uh, Margaret about this all the time. I said, there's no make way. Logical sense. There's no way I can be affected by it. Yeah, there is. Yeah. And the other aspect of that, Margaret, that maybe you could talk about is loss and grieving and how it's tied together. Like when we lose someone and like in this breakup, if you lose this person, it's bringing you back in your unconscious. Yeah. And all of your other losses um, come along with it. Um, they used to use the paper clip analog analogy that if you try to pick up one paper clip, usually a lot of other ones come with it, and that's kind of like grief. Um, if somebody major walks out of your life, then all your other losses come back to you, whether you've lost a parent or, um, you know, friends when you were younger. All those things come back to you, and it feels overwhelming, and it feels like you're going to die. And we understand that, and we're so sorry. Yeah. Now, uh... We had talked about if you're feeling particularly anxious, something might be going on that you're losing somebody, you're at risk of losing somebody, or that it's the anniversary reaction of losing someone. Right. Um, and anniversary reactions, I'm, I'm grateful to the people who taught it to me. It's being mentioned again in the literature now, but nobody has said much about it mm -hmm. um, for quite some time. But on the anniversary of a death, if you've lost a parent, Chances are that every year on the anniversary of that parent or grandparent's death, you're going to think of them. So all those other losses are going to come up around the breakup, too. And I think that also includes, like, losses like a breakup. Oh, sure. Or, oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. like you remember uh, yeah. a breakup or even a divorce. So if your partner has an anniversary reaction to a divorce that they had or something happened in their past, that could also come up and cause them to withdraw or Absolutely. need time or be confused about things or, right. uh, you know, get overwhelmed. Yeah. And I had a woman come to me once um, and several therapists had told her she was bipolar. It didn't sit right with me. I didn't think so. So we did an awful lot of studying of her history and her life story and so forth. And it turns out that she had had enormous numbers of losses, more than you'd think anybody could have. She had parents. They divorced. Each of them remarried and started another family, okay? So she had then lost all those new families in addition to the regular people that she would have lost. So she had, you know, extra sets of parents who came with the other, um, the other relationships. Yeah. Um, and she had had like seven or eight fairly close anniversaries, one right after the other, and her mood was going up and down, and she wasn't bipolar at all. Anniversaries can be very important. If you or somebody you're close to seems to be bummed out, um, I remember I, I knew a guy one time who was bummed out every winter. As soon as it would come January, he would be absolutely bummed out. Mm -hmm. And it turns out he was sent to live at a rel with a relative after Christmas one year. Mm -hmm. Okay, So there are all kinds of things that can come back to you. Now, some of you may be thinking, but what does this have to do with my ex missing me? or forgetting about me. We're trying to tell you the mechanisms by which people remember and forget. I can see why. Yeah. I can see why. But if you can understand some of the reasons why these seemingly nonsensical things happen, it makes you feel a little better. Yeah. So one of the big reasons that it's so hard for you to stop thinking about them is because the primal fear of an annihilation of death is overwhelming you. So. The separation feels like death. That's right. Yeah. And so what we're trying to also help you understand is on some level, they are going to feel that too. Exactly. They're going to be just as attached to you in their unconscious and their conscious as you are of them. Yes. Now, if they made the decision to end the relationship, 
obviously it's easier on them because they feel this sense of control over right. the situation. Right. Like they know where to find you so they wouldn't be abandoned. Whereas for you, you don't know where to find them so you're not abandoned, if that makes sense. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But basically the question is, if we go into no contact, is that going to hurt my chances of getting my partner back? No. 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 In fact, we're trying to get you to see that them feeling the separation anxiety is the most powerful thing you can do. But you've got to work on yourself in the meantime because the relationship wasn't working. I get frustrated when you guys get bogged down on if they will come back and not how can you turn things around when they do come back. Because if you're only thinking about when they come back, you're really going to miss the opportunity to change things and have something healthy. But you're trying to respond to your anxiety and make yourself feel better. And, yeah. and in the meantime, you feel like you're dying. Yeah, absolutely. So I was thinking about like some of the things that we are overwhelmed with mm -hmm. when you're worried if your ex is thinking about you or missing you or forgetting uh, about you. So here's some of the things that you might be experiencing. Uh, feeling consumed with that other person yep. that you just nonstop obsession. And that's that separation anxiety telling you find them, find them, find them, find them or, you've die. Got to, or, or you're going to die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why it feels like death, right? Those intrusive thoughts yep. uh, where you try not to think about it. You try to put it out of the back of your mind so you could get some work done or do some things. And still it keeps coming back. Right. Um, a, a sense of longing mm -hmm. where you just keep longing for this person and missing them and that connection. And almost seeing them coming around every corner. Yeah. yeah. Um, eating more than you usually do or eating less. I think probably more people eat less. I think we hear more about that than the two gallons of ice cream. Yeah. yeah. But some people, I suppose, eat more. In fact, leave us a comment because I'd be curious to, if you eat more or eat less. Or eat less, yeah. yeah. Thank you. That's a good idea. Um, obviously feeling lovesick, lonely, isolated, yeah. um, depressed. depressed. That's a big one. Yeah. Um, distracted. Yeah. Overwhelming feelings nonstop. How can one person go through this but the other one not ha have any of it? I just don't think it's possible. I don't either. Because since uh, mutuality is assumed here, you know, mm -hmm. if I loved that person, that person loved me once. Yes, they did. Yeah. And I know a lot of people are going to be like, not my ex. My ex is going to be the one that forgot about me. Yes, and my ex is so stubborn, they'd never take any steps to get back to me. Yeah. But you can't, it doesn't help you. It, but... Uh, you know, I thought maybe you could talk about the extreme rare cases where somebody has not bonded with somebody like that. Because we've talked about, uh, in your experience, when you even work in, in the prisons, that only one person would you have felt was like a true sociopath. Right. And now, again, along with the word narcissist, we've added sociopath and psychopath. Psychopath isn't mm -hmm. even a word that we use anymore, but it sounds worse than the other ones, so we use it again now. Um, if you're a psychopath, you're probably going to be in the prison if you want to see me, okay? Yeah. Um, but the psychopath, too, you know, never bonds in a way that connects them to other people's feelings. In terms of attaching, um, the avoidant person never fully attached to mom in a normal way. Okay, um, and if you think about it, when we're babies in the crib, we don't know if mom's ever coming back to pick us up, to feed us, to change us, to do any of that. We never know. Um, so we worry about it a whole lot um, until we determine that our environment in is indeed predictable. And it's not always the parents' fault. What if you have eight children um, and somebody gets monkeypox? I mean, it's going to disrupt your ability to be there consistently for that baby. Yeah. All right. So um, all of that plays into it. But how, one thing you might do is ask yourself, how could anyone forget about, about me? And write down your good qualities. What would anyone love about me? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm cute, I'm funny, I'm intelligent, I make really good jokes, whatever you have going for you, okay? Um, and if I can see that, and I've only known you for an hour, what about somebody who dated you? Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Um, so, 
have a little faith um, in love in the world and and have a little faith in the process. People live through this process and sometimes come out of it much better equipped to understand what's going on with them. Okay? So your, your ex, your, the, the one who's broken up with you, um, is going to take some time. And that's what they told you they needed. So that's okay and that's normal and that doesn't mean they're never coming back. But let me go back to my friend, the ubiquitous third party. Okay? Um, who has now told you that so-and-so has been seen at Joe's Bar and Grill with a really nice-looking guy and looks very happy um, two weeks after you've broken up. So you immediately think, oh my God, she's found somebody else, she's in love again, and they're going to go off into the sunset. That's it, I've been replaced. Yep, right? that's it, I've been replaced, mm -hmm. it's over now for me. Um, and you can imagine your critical inner voice is saying, see, I told you you were rotten and no good, mm -hmm. um, blah, blah, blah. Um, so, but you can't, and the other thing that sometimes verges on amusing, people with a really avoidant partner will say, well, what, if she doesn't hear from me, she's going to forget about me. She's not going to hook up with the next guy because if she was avoidant with you, she's going to be avoidant with him. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I hear that a lot. I, that's it. She's going to go off into the sunset with this guy. Um, and it feels like it, Margaret. It feels like it. It really exactly. does. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, I've been thrown over for another baby or lover. Yeah. yeah. So it's important for you to understand that this goes much deeper than just consciously thinking about somebody, yeah. right? Because in our unconscious, we are overwhelmed by dreams, yeah. fears, fears, wishes, yeah. thoughts, right. memories yeah. that are going to come up and they're going to think about you, even if they consciously tried not to think about you, they're going to think about you. Of course they are. Yeah, they're going to have a range of emotions. There's always music that you listen together. There are all kinds of things in the environment that can bring you back. You know, my girlfriend liked scrambled eggs and used to make them every Saturday and all those kinds of things. So we're trying to help you really see that they're not going to forget about you. Okay, now it doesn't mean that they're going to necessarily want to come back and repair things, but they're not going to forget about you, which... Because you went no contact. That's right. Yeah. Because you went no contact. It, they're not going to forget about you because of that. It's just not the way the human brain works in any way. Right. Right? And we're always reassuring people, but I don't know how much, how much good it does you. They can't forget about you. That's just not how we're wired. Okay? Yeah. They cannot want to talk to you for a while. They can really need some space. Um, but they can't forget about you. In other words, do people forget all about exes every time they have a breakup? No. Do mm -hmm. people get back together? Yes. Okay. You know, one of the hard things for you is that, you know, you're wondering if they're going to miss you. Mm -hmm. Well, because they're in control of the situation uh, and maybe they're frustrated or they feel like it's never going to work or it's not going to turn around or whatever it is, you know, they're kind of like, set with their decision at first. So they're not missing you at first. Maybe here and there, right. but not like you are when you right. feel like the abandoned child who lost mommy and daddy yep. who's desperate to get them back, right? So as time goes on, they will miss you, but you've got to stop reaching out. Every time you reach out, then they're not going to miss you. They're going to be, oh, okay, they still want me. I don't have to worry about losing them, right? right. You're just reassuring them that they can still have you and now you're not gaining any power back right. or giving yourself right. any, you know, right. ability to make them feel how you're feeling. And many times people will go out um, feeling free at last um, right away and they will maybe see several other people. Um, oftentimes people do that. Does that mean they forgot about you? No. Are they probably trying to forget about you? Yes. Okay, but it would be very interesting to take stock and say, well, why would somebody want me? Here are the pros. Why would somebody not want me? Here are the cons. And then you're ready to start working on it. Yep. All of the explanations that we gave you, really think about it and process it because we want your ex to experience all the same feelings that you did or you are. But that only really happens when you leave them alone and exactly. you go no contact. Exactly. 
and then they say, wow, I don't have control of this anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah. Of course, every situation is different and breakups are extremely confusing. And that is why we're here for coaching. You can talk with us about it. You'll feel so much better just talking with us like I did with Margaret and <laughs> wouldn't leave her alone. Um, no, I really wouldn't. <laughs> so we're here for you when you want to get our help personally. You can do that on my website, AskCraig.net. I do email coaching and I do Skype. And of course, Margaret is available for Skype coaching. If you think I can be helpful, please sign up. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon.